so the tropical splenomegaly is an older term hyperreactive malarial splenomegaly syndrome is the latest term so it uh, it represents an exaggerated immune response to the recurrent or persistent malarial infection it can be recurrent or chronic persistent infection this is a complication of chronic malaria which uh, we usually see in the eastern indonesia and most parts of india also and it is mostly associated with the plasmodium vivax and malaria can occur with any other malarial species but most commonly with vivax and malaria so how it occurs it is uh, it starts with repeated exposure to the malaria which creates an aberrant immunological response this is due to decrease in number of t suppressor lymphocytes that means uh, normal t suppressor cells down regulate the b cells function and antibody production but here the t suppressor cells uh, count decreases so it leads to increase in production of uh, antibodies like igm antibodies will increase secondary to the down regulation of the decrease in down regulation of the b lymphocytes this igm is specific to the activated cd8 cells so ultimately uh, immune complex formation will occur and uh, there will be dense hepatic sinusoidal lymphocytosis and that again leads to the prolonged stimulation of the splenic reticular endothelial cells and that leads to the massive splenomegaly these antibodies actually persist and they lead to the imbalance between cd4 cells and the cd8 cells and they are associated with non specific b cell activation these igm aggregates these aggregates are phagocytosed by the cells of reticular endothelial system and stimulating macrophage and t cell hyperplasia eventually a uh, massive hypertrophy of these tissues occur so clinical features uh, which are like splenomegaly itself left upper quadrant uh, pain and ultimately portal hypertension and ascites lower extremity edema fatigue and dyspnea can occur and the, all the symptoms increase with uh, progressively increase with the disease progression but parasitemia is uncommon this is actually due to exaggerated immune response and uh, seeing parasites in the blood is less common anemia is due to hypersplenism especially in females of reproductive age group varicell bleeding is uh, uncommon but it can occur consequent to a portal hypertension but it is very rare <laughs> to the diagnosis we'll suspect hmss in long term residents of uh, malarial areas who have massive splenomegaly and who have high serum anti malarial antibodies so, uh, this is the published criteria for the diagnosis of hmss uh, but there are many uh, criteria but most preferred are these five points firstly we need to exclude other causes of splenomegaly and there should be strongly positive anti malarial antibody test splenomegaly should be at least 10 cm serum igm should be more than two standard deviations more than two standard deviations than normal this polyclonal igm hyper gamma globulinemia is one of the characteristic features in these patients and the fifth point is there should be clinical and immunological response to the anti malarial prophylaxis or treatment there is another criteria called fakimle criteria which has uh, three major and five minor criteria now coming to the treatment lifelong anti malarial treatment uh, is the must uh, for the duration of ongoing malarial exposure or at least till ongoing malarial exposure <clears throat> we give chloroquine 300 mg base that is 500 mg of salt once weekly this is effective in reducing the splenic size and symptoms over several months in most of the cases chloroquine because chloroquine has immunological effect on hmss in addition to its anti malarial properties we prefer chloroquine for the treatment of hmss rather than uh, artemisinin based treatments suppose if there are areas with uh, where uh, there is a uh, high chloroquine resistance then we use we can use some other alternative agents in for the initial treatment and then followed by the prophylactic dose itself splenectomy is not usually done because it has the risk of mortality it is only considered as treatment for severe debilitating massive splenomegaly which is unresponsive unresponsive to risk medical management 
Blood transfusion can be done in cases of anemia. In absence of reinfection, elimination of the chronic malaria usually leads to the resolution of this HMSS. If left undiagnosed and untreated, there are chances of uh, conversion of HMSS to the splenic lymphoma and it is difficult to distinguish it from the HMSS with standard clinical and hematological techniques. So in cases where chronic malaria has been excluded using PCR or after trial of therapy and if other relevant infections such as leishmaniasis or viral hepatitis have also been excluded, then early splenectomy may be considered to minimize these risks of conversion to splenic lymphoma etc or uh, to decrease the risks of uh, uh, portal hypertension and other complications.